Welcome back to M. Ratthitch channel, the best place to learn table tennis. The video has the subtitle. Please turn on captioning for better understanding. John J.K. Masterclass Lesson 7, Forehand and Backhand Topspin. Control of Friction Ball and Space Sense. The tutorial is explained by John J.K. Grand Slam Player in Table Tennis. Translated by Coach M. Rathich. Tutorial with voice over of Coach M. Rathich. If you love the video, give me a thumb up, thank you very much. Hello everyone, welcome to my table tennis course. In previous classes, we learned the basic movements and steps of table tennis. Start with this lecture. We need to learn table tennis skills. What I want to talk to you about in this lesson is topspin the ball. Topspin the ball is a looping ball by taking advantage of the strong topspin created. When hitting the ball, generate rotational speed and force. Create pressure on opponents and find scoring opportunities. When you practice topspin the ball, the first thing to pay attention to is the rationality of the shot and the coordination of the movements. Start by topspin the ball. You have to start learning how to control arcs and rotations. In today's table tennis world, if you ask, many people think that the charm of table tennis lies in speed and power. But if I say that the charm of table tennis lies in the rotation, in the way of hitting the ball, topspin the ball is divided into forehand topspin and backhand topspin. At the same time, the positions should be divided into static knit stage and far stage. Near table topspin ball. This is what we commonly call fast topspin and fast belting. Your feet should stand a little wider. Lean forward slightly. The center of gravity is relatively low. Keep it steady. When swinging the racket with a forehand topspin near the table, the position of the playing hand is from back to front. Origin is outside the body. After the swing is completed, return your hands to the front of your body. When doing movements, pay attention to the coordination of your arms and body. Turn your body to the right when swinging the racket. In the process of turning the waist, use the belt to move your arms. There is a feeling of combined force in the forearm, wrist and fingers. Pay attention to the strength of the waist and hips is the most important. Pay special attention to the rotation of the waist and hips. When practicing, can't exert force straight up and down. At the same time, your right shoulder should be slightly lower. Forearm droops naturally. Use your wrist to control the forward tilt of the racket. Forward angle. It can be adjusted according to the different rotations played by the opponent. Static backhand topspin. Commonly known as our quick topspin and quick belt. Tear quickly. The feet should also be slightly wider. Lean forward. Keep your center of gravity stable. When swinging, hold the playing hand from the front of the body to the outside of the body. Finally came back to me. When topspin the ball backhand, you can also choose to hit the upper middle part of the ball to create arcs and rotations during training. Whether it is a forehand topspin or a backhand topspin, pay special attention to the distance between your elbows and your body. Don't squeeze your elbows too tightly, clamp too tightly. Not only will it make your movements less relaxed, it will also make your range very limited when topspin the ball. Mastered these essentials. Let me share another important point with you. It's when you topspin the ball close to the table. Find the rising point after the ball bounces and hit the ball. Make small movements. Keep the body compact. Close shots test the speed of topspin the ball. When you reach a certain level of stability and accuracy, you can train on speed. The main points of the forehand 
and backhand topspin at the mid-range and near table are basically the same as those at the near range. The difference from the near stage is the change in the size of the action. What you need to pay attention to here is when hitting the ball, there should be some impact with friction. In this way, the pressure of the ball will be stronger, will be faster, the quality will be higher. In formal competition, the scoring rate of mid to close topspin is relatively high. After your training has achieved certain results, you can topspin the ball. Switch back and forth between near platform and middle platform. You can also practice your forward and backward footwork. Look for coordination and stability of movement and your hitting spot. After mastering the forehand and backhand topspin of the midrange and near table, you can practice topspin far from the table. The range of the ball topspin movement of the forehand topspin is relatively larger. Forehand's topspin ball will form a confrontation with the opponent during the game. There are more scenes of topspin. The overall action structure is basically the same as that of the middle and near stages. When topspin the ball from the remote platform during training, don't spend too much time practicing your backhand. In official competition, topspin far from the table if you use your backhand to topspin, there is a high probability that he will be very passive. What needs to be noted here is that forehand topspin point. Topspin the ball at the point where it drops after it bounces. Also pay attention to the running ability of your feet, because forehand has the largest range of ball movement. After you have a good grasp of the ball, you can structure the forehand and backhand movements in training. Combine training with front, back, left, and right running. Increase your flexibility when you can accurately control the intensity and angle of friction. You will find that you no longer have to worry about past problems. When top spin the ball. Because as long as you rub it enough, the ball spins. The arc of knowing is already far higher than the net. What I particularly want to tell you here is that when you are practicing forehand and backhand top spin the ball, Pay attention to the ratio of forehand to backhand. Don't put too much effort into practicing your backhand. Just because you're lazy, often the game you want to win ends up being helped by your forehand. All right, let me summarize this lesson for you. You learn the skill of topspin the ball with both hands and backhands. The key to topspin the ball forward and backhand is while ensuring coordination and body stability in movements, feeling for the friction ball and your ability to step. Use topspin on the ball to create spin speed and power, create scoring opportunities. Simultaneously topspin the ball in the middle and near table. It is the main offensive scoring point in official games. The topspin of the ball from the mid-range table is more about topspin or saving the ball from the far table. These are the key points of our content. I hope you can slowly master it as you practice. Finally, I want to share some methods of topspin the ball. When topspin the ball forward and backhand, you can train in this way. Forehand topspin, 20 topspin in a row, complete 5 sets. Backhand topspin ball 20 times in a row, train 5 sets. Of course the more the better without making any mistakes. Join the switching of near, middle and far stations through the steps of your feet. Find the hitting spot. Train your own rhythm of topspin the ball to be careful of. After topspin the ball and topspin the ball, keep your shoulders in a relaxed state. Don't be stiff. All right, see you in the next class. The next videos can be found on Pinkson Day.
大家好，欢迎你们来到我的乒乓球课程。在之前的几节课里，我们学习了乒乓球的基础动作和步伐。从这一讲开始，我们要学习乒乓球的技能。本节课要跟你讲的就是拉球。拉球就是弧旋球，通过利用击球时制造的强烈上旋球，产生旋转速度与力量，给对手制造压力，并找到得分机会。在你练习拉球的时候，首先要注意的是击球合理性和动作的协调性。从拉球开始，你就要开始学习对弧线和旋转的控制。在当今乒乓球界，你如果去问很多人，会认为乒乓球的魅力在于速度和力量。但是如果让我说，乒乓球的魅力在于旋转。在击球方式上，拉球分为正手拉球和反手拉球，同时在站位上要分为近台、中台和远台。近台拉球，也就是我们俗称的快拉和快带，你的双脚要站得略宽一点，身体微微前倾，重心相对要低，保持稳定。近台正手拉球，挥拍时持拍手的位置是从后向前，起点在身体外侧，挥拍完成后，手回到身体前侧。做动作的时候要注意手臂和身体的配合，挥拍时身体向右，重心随着身体向右倾斜。在转腰的过程中，用腰带动大臂、前臂、手腕、手指，有一种合力的感觉。注意腰胯的力量是最重要的，在练习时要特别体会腰胯的旋转，不能直上直下的发力。同时，你的右肩要略低一点，小臂自然下垂。用手腕控制板型，板型前倾，前倾的角度可以根据对手打过来的旋转不同来进行调整。近台的反手拉球，俗称我们的快拉、快带、快撕。双脚也是要略宽一点，身体前倾，保持重心稳定。挥拍时，持拍手从身体前侧向身体外侧挥出，最终回到身前。反手拉球时，你也可以选择击打球的中上部，来制造弧线和旋转。在训练时，无论是正手拉球还是反手拉球，都要特别注意手肘与身体的距离，不要让。手肘夹得太紧，夹得太紧不仅会让你的动作没那么放松，还会让你在拉球的时候范围受到非常大的局限。掌握了这些要领，我再和你分享一个重点，就是近台拉球的时候，要找球反弹后上升点去击球，动作要小，身体保持紧凑。近台是考验拉球速度的，当你达到一定稳定性和准确性之后，就可以在速度上进行训练了。中近台正反手拉球的动作要领和近台基本一致，与近台不同的是动作大小的变化。这里你需要注意的是，击球时要摩擦中带有一些撞击，这样球的压迫性才会更强，速度会更快，质量也会更高。在正式的比赛中，中近台拉上旋球的得分率是相对较高的。当你训练有了一定的成果以后，你可以在拉球的时候，在近台与中台之间来回切换，同时也可以锻炼自己的前后步伐，找一下动作的协调性和稳定性，以及你的击球点。掌握了。中近台正反手拉球以后，就可以练习中远台。
中远台的拉球动作幅度相对要大一点。中远台拉球在比赛当中会跟对方形成对拉的场面较多，整体动作结构和中近台基本一致。在训练中远台拉球时，不用花太多的时间练习反手。正式比赛中，中远台如果你用反手去拉，大概率就会很被动。在这里需要注意的就是，中远台的击球点要在球弹起后的下降点进行拉球。还要注意你脚下的跑动能力，因为中远台拉球的跑动范围是最大的。当你对近、中、远台有很好的掌握以后，你可以在训练中把正反手动作大小的结构。和前后左右跑动结合起来训练，增加自己的灵活性。当你能够准确地控制好摩擦的力度和角度时，你会发现，就是拉球的时候不再担心过往问题，因为只要你摩擦的够，球旋转起来知道的弧线已经远远高于网。这里我特别想告诉你的就是，你在练习正反手拉球的时候要注意正反手的比例，不要因为懒，投入过多的精力练到反手。往往你想赢的比赛，最后都是正手帮助了你。好吧，我来帮你总结一下，这堂课你学习了正反手拉球的技能。正反手拉球的关键是在动作保证协调和身体稳定的同时，对摩擦球的感觉以及你的步伐能力，利用球的上旋制造旋转，速度和力量创造得分机会。同时，中近台拉球在正式比赛中是主要进攻得分点，中远台的拉球更多是形成对拉或者远台救球，这些就是我们拉球的内容重点。希望你在练习的时候慢慢掌握。最后，我想分享一些拉球的方法。正反手拉球的时候，你可以依照这种方法去训练。正手拉球二十个一组，完成五组；反手拉球二十个一组，训练五组。当然，越多越好，保证不失误的情况下，通过脚下的步伐加入近、中、远台的切换，找好击球点，训练自己的拉球节奏。要注意的是，在拉球和拉球结束以后，要让自己的肩部处于放松状态，不要僵硬。好了，我们下节课见。Read more about table tennis on my blog, pingsunday.com. Get free ebook and coaching advices. See you in the next video.